And welcome back YouTube. This is Mr. Baxbuster here with the second video of this doubleheader Wildcard Wednesday. This video I'm going to be sharing with you some of my more recent Dungeons and Dragons miniatures that I have picked up. Uh, so I guess we're going to call this a mini mail haul. Alright. So the first miniature that I want to share with you is this little guy right here. Let's see if the camera will focus. There we go. Very lovely miniature. I like it quite a bit. Got that mohawk going on. Almost looks like something from Borderlands. Maybe one of the crazies from Borderlands. Very cool blue cape. Even has a quiver there with bow and arrows, maybe some extra tomahawks. And this particular character is called uh, ULMO Lightbringer. So, Ulmo, Ulmo Lightbringer. Very cool. This is from the Angel Fire set, and it is a rare, as you can tell by the star. I did not pull this out of my original Angel Fire case, so it is nice to have this mini miniature of Umul Lightbringer. Alright, up next. We have a very cool character here. I believe this one is the Death Slad. Yes, the Death Slad. This comes from the Underdark set, as you can tell by the uh, spider marker, and this is a rare. Now this one I really like. The, the face is really cool. The, uh, almost like a uh, pitch axe that he's holding there along with this really awesome looking spear. It's just really cool. I really like the uh, the face. Very determined. And of course the red cloak to show that he is a higher up character. He is one of the more uh, intelligent slad. Really cool character and this is actually an epic it does come with two sets of cards one regular and one blue to if you want a more powerful version of him that is the death slad all right up next let's go with this really wicked character This one just screams cool. And this one is from the Underdark set. He is the Half Fiend Ogre, and this is a rare. I absolutely love the wings on this guy to show the fiendish side of him. The face just looks absolutely terrifying. He does, uh, if it'll pick up here, this side of the mouth looks really good. This side of the mouth, he does appear to be missing some teeth with some black spots on it, so that it could either be like super decayed teeth you could pose as, or you could always do a little bit of retouch and uh, maybe give him the rest of his teeth there. The armor on this guy is absolutely cool. I absolutely love it. The The sword that he's wielding, it's a medium to large size sword, so it will mean business. I mean, compared to the medium sized slat here, I mean, that'll cut right through him. So that is one intimidating sword. Would not want to run into this guy anywhere, because he would probably do a little slice and dice and turn you into sushi. Very cool 
many. I do like this one quite a bit. It turned out a lot nicer in person than it was on the uh, photos. Uh, up next, we have this uh, blue looking uh, slad, actually, but he's not a slad. He is a troll. Troll is this guy's name. He comes from the Angel Fire set, and he is just an uncommon, but I did not have him. So I did need this particular miniature. The really cool looking mouth on this guy. The pointed shoulders and the bony back. I mean, this guy could easily be used as a slad if you need a slad uh, replacement. It could also just be used as like a... Maybe like you're walking through a frost a very cold environment and you need a just like an ice demon or some sort of frozen monster to attack or to uh, attack the party this guy would fit in fine very cool miniature once it, once again a very nice mini to own up next Let's do, whoop, apologies about the shift there. Uh, let's do this one. Dragons are always awesome to have. This is one sleek looking dragon. And this comes from the Underdark set. It is a large, deep dragon, and it is a rare. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call this guy large. I would probably describe it more as like a medium size or a young adult dragon. Because it is, I mean, if you compare it to the uh, half-fiendish ogre here, I mean, the half-fiendish ogre is literally the size of the dragon, so I, I would definitely call it more of a medium-sized dragon, not a full-on size large dragon. I absolutely love the texture of this guy, though. Very cool. Very well detailed. The slim-looking face is just epic. I love the little uh, curl on the tail there, and the wings on this guy are painted uh, pretty well, the silver and the black just almost make it look like a Batman type thing going on. Very cool. I really do like this miniature. I just wish it was a little bit bigger, but I can understand them needing to uh, stick to a certain size. The texture is just super well done though. Really cool miniature nonetheless. And that is the Large Deep Dragon. Uh, let's do this, this guy next. This guy was kind of hard to find, but I was very excited once I found him. This is the Greater Basculus, and that is the logo for the Night Below set, and he is indeed a rare. Uh, Basculus are... I don't know what it is, but they don't make a lot of Basculus miniatures, and this guy is fantastic. He almost looks... reminds me a lot of the uh, Behemoth from Final Fantasy, and that is a good thing. This guy's vicious tongue and mouth really stick out. His eyes are just piercing. You would not want to run into that face in a back alley, let alone a dungeon or a cave. The scaling on this guy is really well done. The spikes really look cool. And just the purple uh, overtone really set this miniature off. Really cool mini overall. Once again, great addition to the collection. That was the Greater Basculus. Uh, up next is a mini that I was kind of disappointed with when I got. And I'll tell you why in a minute. 
This is the Sword Archon, or Archon, from the Angel Fire set, and that is indeed a rare. The wings on this guy is really well done. I do like the like faded wings. And this guy is large. This is a large angel angelic character. He has his face is uh, not the best, but that I, I come to expect that from a lot of humanoid characters in the pre-painted sets. The detail to the chest is actually quite well done. He does definitely has a six pack. Definitely a buff dude. He has the swords for hands. That's pretty cool, almost like swords of light. And he he has like a almost like a phoenix type thing going on here with the two wings and then like the tail wing there too. Very lovely. Uh, honestly, I I was just I was not expecting this guy to be this large. This is a very large uh, miniature. I mean, this would be like a giant, or not a giant, but this would definitely be probably close to 10 feet tall when you stand him next to a normal humanoid, the Death Slide. With the wingspan, I mean, the wingspan would probably be close to 12 feet tall, 10 to 12 feet tall. Very cool. My only issue with this one was I did not get the stack card with this particular miniature. And it said it was supposed to come with a stack card. So besides that, the mini itself is cool, but I was just disappointed that I did not get the stack card that it clearly said that it was supposed to come with. I just gotta grab a couple more that I forgot to grab here. Alright, so the next mini I want to share with you guys is one that I think is personally really cool. And this guy's name is the Dracutar Ranger. It is from the Night Below set, rare. And I absolutely love the green that this guy has. It really pops out well. The texture of his skin, really uh, scaly, almost very lizard-like. Absolutely fantastic miniature. And the dual-wielding axis just really puts the uh, extra cherry on top of this miniature. Definitely a great encounter piece. Or you can even use it as like a, a mount if you're able to mount a character onto him. That would be a great uh, mount-like monster as well. Definitely a cool mini to add to the collection. This next one is another fantastic mini. I was, uh, this one I was, I found for a great deal. And there, I was not able to, I cannot find many listings for this one, but the one I found, fantastic deal, and I had to jump on it. And this from the Night Below set is the Orc Bane Break Rider. It's essentially an orc on what appears to be a rhino like am animal, and it is wonderful. Imagine this guy like leading a charge in an army in a battle against his sworn enemies or the sworn tribe that he's vowed vengeance against. This would be a fantastic mini for like a to lead the charge in the battle. Perfect mini for that. The Rhino has really good armor with that uh, like faceplate on the front there for its horn. And then the armor on the back to protect its backside from any uh, blindsided arrow attempts. And I love the fact that the orc itself is dual wielding axes, so it could just kind of be running and go like whishaw, whishaw, to pr to uh, just slice down its opponents as he's as the rhino 
uh, charges them by. Very epic mini. Very happy to add this to the collection. One of the best ones I got out of this uh, pickup so far. Alright, so I got three miniatures left to share with you guys, and these three are all great minis. It's hard to choose a favorite between these last three. So this one is what I like to call, it's an iron golem, but I like to call it the iron giant with a giant sword. This is from the Underdark set, he is a rare. It also kind of looks like, uh, the, is it the Iron Defenders, the X-Defenders from uh, Final Fantasy? The like giant suits of armor that kind of look similar to this. Fantastic miniature, very multiple great uses. Uh, great pose too. I like how he's in the like, the ready to slash pose. The visor is glowing red to show that it's, it could be a mechanical or magic type character that's being brought to life here. Very great detail showing like all the little rivets and the runes on the back there. Very monochrome color but it, it's an iron giant or iron golem sorry so it's not supposed to be a multiple color character. Absolutely love it. Uh, got it for a great deal. Very, very happy to add it to the collection. Alright guys, we're down to our last two miniatures to share for the day for the video. Up next, and this is might be my favorite probably my second favorite mini that I got. I'm sharing, saving my last, my two favorites for last here. From those who remember watching my Night Below video, I was severely disappointed that I, not get, that I did not get this miniature, but now I own it. It is, from Night Below, the Dread Wraith, and that is a rare. This looks like the ring race from Lord of the Rings. So this has multiple uses. You could use it in Lord of the Rings. You could use it in D&D. &D. You could even use it as the as the uh, those characters from Harry Potter. If you're playing a Harry Potter campaign, I guess. Multiple uses. Absolutely fantastic miniature. Super excited to add it to the collection. I love how it's semi-translucent, it has the hollowed out face, absolutely nobody inside there but death itself. The only bad thing is when I got the miniature, the sword was bent, but that could easily be fixed, and I could fix that off camera. The back of this guy just looks fantastic. How the wraith is, all the clothing and like ghostliness is just kind of blowing in the wind to whatever the wind deems plus his own will just fantastic absolutely love this miniature and now I can finally say it's part of the collection alright now that is a pretty great cast of miniatures right it's hard to top the Dread Wraith. It's hard to top the Iron Golem. It's hard to top the Orc Banebreaker. But I got a miniature that tops them all. Just for its pure presence and its coolness. That's right. Hailing from the unhallowed set, we got the Werewolf Lord Rare. This guy is massive. Just to compare size, look at him versus the Iron Golem. 
Actually, it looks like a pretty good video game matchup there. He is actually taller than the Iron Golem. That's amazing. In that, in this pose, he actually barely fits in the case that I that I have for my, my miniatures. So that tells you something about uh, how tall he is. Just look at this guy, though. His abs. That is like an 8-pack. His ferocious face. He is ready for a brawl. He's like, bring it, bro! That hair looks great. Those fingers, those claws. I, I actually, it would have been kind of nice if they put a little red down there just to kind of show a little blood stain, but, you know. That could easily be fixed if I ever want to do that in the future. Just the pure presence of this guy. Like, if you're doing uh, Vampire the Masquerade, if you're doing uh, some sort of, like, Halloween theme, gotta catch the werewolf, gotta catch the uh, supernatural type character, gotta go after him, this would be, like, the final boss, the ringleader, the king of that campaign. Or he could be used as, like, the muscle that guards the king or the ringleader. Just a fantastic, fantastic miniature. Very large and in charge. The, the fangs on this guy just look deadly. I mean, just look at that guy. He, he, he wants to take a bite of my finger and just gnaw on it all day. Um, my only issue with this particular miniature is you can kind of easily see the um, molding line right on the neck here. But besides that, this miniature is super large, super in charge, and honestly one of the best miniatures from the entire Unhallowed set. Very excited that I found him at a good price and was able to add him to my collection. That is the last miniature that I have to share with you guys. Honestly, I think I picked up some fantastic miniatures. These would look great in any sort of campaign setting or just great on a collection shelf. Let me know what your favorite miniature is from this pickup down in the comments below. And this is some Booster Box Buster with episode 2 of this double header wildcard Wednesday with some D&D miniature pickups, signing out.